drove a lot of traffic to certain websites. Getting listed on there could really change. Um, it, it could, could really change the fate of your web page. If you got searched really high in Google, if you came up when someone searched high, you would, or like flowers is actually a better example. A lot of companies could sell online flowers on the internet, and you, you, you see this in examples, but people, companies actually made a lot of money by selling flowers on the internet. This is one of the first things that actually, actually worked. Um, and getting, you know, getting the top hit for flowers on Google is, was, was worth a lot. And that's why advertisers would pay to have, whenever someone searched for flower, they would get their, get their link listed there. They paid it. Um, so, so, so being linked to by Google would really affect, would, would really affect the traffic. But they want to search for pages which they weren't already linked to, right? So, so how do you understand this in a graph, right? How do you understand which pages are, are important? Maybe the um, probability of random walk. Uh, yeah, the, the random walk will, the probability that you will land on that, on that page. Oh, great. Uh, 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 so this is pretty much right. So they, they had the idea of a random surfer, right? So say you're, you're, you're procrastinating working on the project, and so you're browsing the web, and you, you click on, you, you open up Wikipedia, and they give you a link to an article, and then you click on another link, another article on Wikipedia, and you walk all, you know, you kind of are randomly surfing the web, right? So there's this idea of a uh, random surfer. Um, and so the idea is, um, so the, the, there was this, um, the page rank of a page is, is, is proportional to the probability a, um, um, a random surfer um, would um, go to um, this page, right? So, and the random surfer is defined. You go to a web page that has a bunch of links. You click on one at random, and you go to that page, and you just continue like this. And this is not too far from what the crawlers were actually doing. So, if you were, if a page was going to have a high page rate, your crawler should be able to find it. So, this was also good. Um, so it, it was something that they could, they would find these pages if they were linked to. Um, so, but but how do we how do we find where a random surfer will actually actually go to? How do we find this probability? We can let these crawlers run, and we're doing this all the time. But the crawler is actually designed to do something slightly different. It's designed to kind of cover the web. It's it's, it's designed to get to every single page that's possibly out there, not to complete, be completely random. If you've been somewhere before, you don't need to necessarily um, visit that web page again. So the crawlers were not actually doing the random surfer model, which is what you wanted. So the crawlers were trying to rank everything equally. They just were trying to trying to get to all the pages. So what's the right way to think about how do you how would you calculate this probability? So one way is you could duplicate your crawlers but tell them to go randomly and don't worry about creating this the signature for the page. Just kind of go explore and just figure out how many times you're on the page. Um, but there are so many pages out there that you're going to get a low probability of hitting any individual page. The, the, number, of, the number of times you hit an individual page may be like three or four times. Maybe a really important page may be ten times. But you're going to get pretty far off on these on these uh, these probabilities. So just sending out a bunch of these random crawlers is not a very efficient way of doing this. Okay. So remember, we have the web structured as a graph, and and we talked about something on Wednesday, right? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, what if we model it like Markov chains, like the third life lesson was, and the limit everything has perfect karma, so. Right, very good. Um, so yeah, so 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 we're going to use Markov chain analysis.
So we're going to treat the web like a big Markov chain. And then the probability that where a random surfer goes is, is going to be captured by this Q star vector, right? So we're going to find this Q star vector um, of, of this graph. This Q star vector is exactly the page. Well, exactly the simple version of page. We're going to have to layer some more stuff on top of this. But, but this is the main idea. OK, so, so, so how do we, just briefly, how would we calculate the page rank now? Now, we could have calculated by doing these random walks based on these crawlers. And actually, this Metropolis algorithm kind of did this. But we only did that because we couldn't actually define the graph in the Metropolis algorithm. It was some continuous space. And here, we have the graph. So remember, so how do we calculate, how would you calculate the Q star? What is the right way to do that? The what? Uh, you can take the eigenvectors, and we'll, we'll be doing this. We're not going to do it exactly. The, the, the graph is going to be too big to put in memory, and most eigenvector computation uses uh, you know, are, are written for doing stuff in main memory. So we're going to use one of the other techniques we talked about. Hand over here. Well, I was going to say it's, we, we have to get that P um, matrix, the, the P, P star times Q. Did I not get that graph? Uh, yeah, so, the, so we can convert this graph into an adjacency matrix. Um, so into this adjacency matrix. And then we do this by um, normalizing. Right, so we can store this, and this adjacency matrix is going to be very sparse, right? There are pages like Yahoo which has thousands of links, but most web pages have you know 10, 10 links on them. So even though it's it's you know it's it's if there are, were a million pages on the web back then, it was a million by million matrix, but mostly zero. So you could store each web page as a um, as a column. And you just point it to the, the links to the other web pages it would, it would point to. And you normalize them, and then you get this transition matrix, a representation of it. Okay? And so then we said that um, Q star equals Pn times Q0 as, as n goes to infinity, right? So we took P to the power n for any starting position. So it doesn't matter where we start. Um, and then we multiply it by this matrix. And so this matrix is now actually, given the probability of being a page, you do some operation where you, you, um, you distribute that probability to a set of pages it links to. Um, and, so this, um, um, and so this operation, um, so, and we, then we do this n times. We multiply it times the matrix, multiply the matrix again for n number of times. Um, and eventually we'll converge to this Q star. And this Q star is going to be basically this page. Um, now we can't go n to infinity. Um, and we don't want to calculate this P to the n. P to the n is, is going to be dense. So, so, so actually what we do is for i equals, say, 1 to 50, and 50 is usually, usually good enough for these things, we do um, Qi equals P times Q I minus times P times Q I minus one. So, so think of taking a state vector, which is a, a probability of being on each web page, and multiplying by this matrix as being some function you can write. Um, and it, it's really a matrix multiplication. You know, you could think of it that way, but it's you can write the function more efficiently. And actually, um, Wednesday we'll talk about MapReduce, and then next week, Monday, we'll talk about how to implement this more efficiently on really large scales. Um, but you, you do this for 50 times, and eventually you get out like Q50. And this will be close enough to Q star. It'll converge pretty quickly. And so I said, anywhere you start Q0, you multiply it times P to the end, you're going to get Q star. And we also said that, notice Q star times um, Q star is equal to P to the N times Q 
star or times p, right? You, you, if you start at q star, you do this transition matrix, you, you're still at q star. It's a, it's a steady state. And so the, the kind of the intuition is, um, is that if you start closer to q star, then you don't have to multiply by the matrix as many times in order to get to the, in order to get, um, you don't have to do that as much in, in order to converge. And so what, what, uh, um, so what Google would do is they would calculate this, this, this matrix, the transition matrix, they would try and update it um, um, like once a day. And this, this has changed over time, but it's, think of it as, as once a day or maybe a couple times a week um, initially. And they would update it, and then they would take from the old, instead of some Q0, this was their old Q stock, which was not too far from being converged. So it wouldn't take too many iterations in order to get to the new Q stock. What would happen to each of node which has no outgoing matrix? Ah, uh, good. This is a good question. So, so, okay, so, uh, so, so this is, so, so I'll, I'll answer, I'll come back to that in a second. Just let me, I, I just want to make sure everyone gets this basic idea. You, you take this web graph and you convert it into this, this uh, transition matrix and you store this as a function and then you have this, this estimation, Q0 of the page rank, which is the probability of a random surfer being on a page or in some sense how important that page is. And then you, you update, you can apply this transition matrix a few times and eventually you'll converge to this this uh, state of the of the actual of the actual random circle. So uh, this is what I I promised. If you have this Markov chain, um, but you need it to satisfy certain conditions, right? In order for this to work, I spend all this time defining this weird definition of a Markov chain being um, being called ergodic, right? So there's this ergodic condition. And so what if, what if you have a page that has no outgoing links, right? Is, is this web graph, as I've defined it, is this going to be ergodic? Right, it's not. So you can't directly use this. It seems we're, we're, we're so close, but we can't quite use it because you, you can easily design web pages that you know point to to this this one page and it gets stuck there, right? Um, and so this will draw in all the probability of a random surfer. Um, so um, so if you were a random surfer and you got to some some web page that had no outgoing links, uh, what would you do? Um, yeah, so, so, so you, what you usually do is you randomly jump to another web page. Usually, it's hard to do completely at random, right? But um, that's what we're going to model the system. So there's this site, so, so what they call it is, uh, uh, they call this taxation. And so some, so, and, and they don't only do it if you get stuck. They do it at every, at every step. Right, so at every step, every time you apply this function where you're updating your state here, some fraction of the time you're you're going to jump to a random web page. Right, so so what you're going to do is that q i plus one is going to be equal to um, alpha plus one minus theta times um, p times q i plus beta times um, i over um, right. so this is a vector that has equal probability at each of the each of the web pages. So n is going to be the number of nodes here, right? So we're going to say that n equals the, the number of pages that you have indexed, and you're you're equally likely going to jump to one of these one of these web pages. This is some beta fraction of the time, and so so typically beta is equal to be like 
0.1. So 10% of the time, you're going to jump to a random web page. And 90% of the time, you're going to follow one of the links. And this may not be too far from what you would actually do. You may go 10 web pages and get bored on that subject and jump to something completely else. Um, so when I first saw this, I thought this beta was actually pretty large. Why wouldn't you just do this like one tenth of one, or just uh, one out of 100 times? But this a beta between 5 and 15% seems to be what uh, works pretty well here. And it turns out that there's, there's some way that this beta parameter, it should look kind of like this um, regularization parameter in ridge regression where it allows you to not overfit the data. If you think of this step, just using this transition matrix is overfitting your data, and this is jumping you to a random location. Maybe this is regressing to the mean. And there's actually some papers that show that this, this is doing some form of regularization. You are actually preventing from overfitting some way and understanding the, the, um, the shape of the graph. There's some way to interpret it then. So this is actually preventing you from getting, it also happens to prevent you from getting stuck in these weird, um, these weird situations. Okay, so, th so this is, this, um, this random surfer model through the taxation is basically how they do payment. Well, um, I haven't told you how you really scale this up very large, but, but this, is, this is the basic idea. They, they compute this Q star value or they, they estimate the Q star value. And then when they're building this, this index, they somehow rank the pages not, not just on how close they are under the cosine distance, but they weight them more if they have a larger Q star value. I'm not, I don't want to link to a random page about pi just because it says pi a bunch of times, but I want, to, I, want to, I want to link to it using Google if a lot of other people are linking to it. I'm going to trust the wisdom of the, of the crowds. This is one maybe one of the first types of really doing crowdsourcing on the internet was um, um, this is what made Google so successful with their search. This got, this got rid of a whole bunch of these people who were just designing web pages to be indexed really well. Um, you could still do these sorts of tricks and these would still help in this formula, but it, you really had to have useful information too, otherwise no one would, would click on it. So this, this really, you know, you, you probably, you, either you've never heard of these companies or you hardly remember them. And that's because, you know, this, this, this uh, page rank algorithm really did much better than just indexing the pages alone. Okay, so, um, so this is pretty, this is a pretty cool idea, but, but it's not, Okay, let me see. We have there are two more things I want to talk about. One, how you can how spammers can still beat this, and also a little bit about the anatomy of the web. Um, so my kind of jumped ahead of me. So uh, let me talk a little bit about how kind of how to think how the web is actually structured, right? So this is maybe kind of illustrative. There's there's a large part of the web which is um, um, strongly connected. This means that, think of this like, um, like most of Wikipedia, that it, everything links, links to Wikipedia at the top of the page, and then from there you can, you can get to every other web page. So strongly connected means every node can get to every other node by a series of hops. So for every web page, you can get to every other web page inside of this set. Um, there, there are also these, these in web pages that, that once you get to the strongly connected component here, you can't get back out to this inset. But these pages will, will provide links into the strongly connected component. And, and I'm, I'm trying to roughly draw this as the web was as the non-hidden part of the web is. There's a, there's a whole notion of the hidden web like pages controlled by Amazon. They don't provide direct links to them, but you can get to them by searching. Or if you know the address. So there are these weird uh, parts that are very hard 
on, on things for search engines to index. The crawlers can't get to them. And sometimes they want the crawlers to get to them, so they will provide special things so the crawlers can find a bunch of Amazon web pages. And sometimes they don't. They'd rather you go to Amazon directly and use their search engine. So Amazon will crawl its own pages or, or build. The, the, Amazon actually uses a model closer to um, Yahoo, where they build their own index. For every page they're selling something, they have a product. So they can go and index into certain categories. But they also provide search, because that, that where you can search based on something like PageRank or based on the index, based on the categories of the page, because they know they're not going to spam themselves. Um, so they'll allow you to search for stuff. Although they have to be careful because they may allow other sellers to sell through their site and they may come up in their search index. So they still have to be somewhat careful about this. But the pages don't tend to link to each other the same way, so they have these other notions of, uh, of bluegrass. Um, okay, so it's kind of a tangent. So, so there's this strongly, there's also this power component where the strongly connected will, will link to, and there are some pages which will go directly from the in to the out component. Uh, uh, this might be a little unrelated, but what, what about web pages that link to other web pages but don't do it through hyperlinks? Maybe maybe uh, hit them or embed them through in the URLs that uh, Ajax services call them and stuff like that. Are those accounted for or is that just? So I'm not totally sure how, how Google handles those. I would guess that they can figure that out. Um, that, that if that so I, I don't know what they currently do at some point you know when Google would, would build these index they would they would tell these web developers here's how here's essentially what you need to do to index the page well to some degree they don't want to aid spammers but they say if you if you use Ajax this way we will we'll be able to figure it out if you do it this other way we might not and that this would excuse me this would allow um, this would allow um, people to do different things on the web, on their page, so they could either um, link directly or, or try and hide the link. And you know, even if Google said they weren't following this link, they still might be able to anyways. So you don't really know. Uh, but they're, the crawlers have gotten a lot more sophisticated since the mid '90s. They're able to kind of interpret some some JavaScript and so forth. So I mean, think of, if it will display on your monitor, then a crawler should be able to figure this out and and figure out what other pages it links to. One other question, sorry. Uh, on that same topic, like I, I um, I've written written a page that does authentication as well. Like contacts Google does like open ID authentication and gets back. Yeah. And I only so I display stuff for a, a user that, that is in my database. But yeah. if the user's not in my database, I don't display anything. Um, and that's something I have completely Yeah, control. yeah, right. Um, and and I, I have a lot of different links once they log in successfully. Right. So so um, so this is called the hidden web. And this is stuff that's very hard for for something like Google Index. And so you may actually need authentication in order to get to these pages sometimes, even to display to these. And so Google will not be able to link to these anyway. So if they did, only people who had authentication would be able to get to them, so it's, it's not very useful for them. Um, so you, uh, um, so, so the, the, this is a hard problem for search engines. And they, now, th there are techniques where people still want to try and understand what's behind there, so they will try and you know, if there's a way to get, if, if you just have to set up, apply for an ID, and you can do this through, like, um, um, there are automatic ways to try and fill out a form. And, and, and it's not that you require, like, it's not like an internal to the university where you need to be a student to get a password. But you just need to sign into it. Then there are ways to try and crawl these web pages still. Um, and sometimes because they have special structure, there's better ways to get around. and. There's there's an active uh, active research in how to do this. Um, this is not a not a solved problem, but um, but people want to be able to index these pages, 
and companies sometimes don't want people to index them. And you can also use a robots.txt file and say that these are authenticated pages, I don't want the search engine to crawl it. And usually crawlers look at robots.txt and then follow that. Yeah, so, so usually with like companies like, uh, uh, like Google, they don't want to get in the news for saying they were on something they should have or something. So if it's if it's something sensitive, they will usually respect these sorts of things unless they they want to crawl anyway. So, so that there's like relationships between say Amazon and Google. Do, does Amazon want Google to crawl? Or maybe for example now is Facebook, right? Does Facebook want um, Google to crawl it? Then you wouldn't need to go to Facebook to find someone. You could just search in Google to find that person's Facebook page. Um, but Facebook does not want this to happen, so they'll try and prevent Google from crawling. And so they have kind of these political battles. You know, uh, Google has great engineers that can figure out ways around this, but um, but they also have um, so Google probably could crawl all of Facebook if they want to, and, and and I think they probably have, right? Or at at some point someone has, but then. They had to delete it because they made an agreement with Facebook. And so some of these things are technological, some of them are actually political, um, how, how this works. So whether you let someone to call these specialized or hidden pages. So, okay, so, uh, so there are also other things from, from in, which, which, can, which you can come out of in, but you can't get to the rest. And these are going to be like these dead ends. And similar, there are ways you can get into into out, but then once you're in this out area, you you, know, you can't go anywhere else. And this is these are a bunch of dead ends, and there are also some disconnected components. And so most of the web um, of the non hidden web is actually structured in the strongly connected components, and there's some of this in and out stuff. And these may be um, connected in themselves, but they're not um, they're, they're not connected to anything. Um, or you can't get to any, any other part of the web once you get in here. But once you do this taxation, immediately every page has a chance to get to every other page. So this, this structure completely disappears. Now, there was part of this thing about being organic that you, you couldn't have any cycles, right? What's a simple way to fix the problem of potentially having cycles? Or would you ever have cycles? You can have cycles because you said like Amazon or Wikipedia has the link that you talk of the page where you can go to Wikipedia. So you can go to Wikipedia and Wikipedia, so there's always a home page link. Right, yeah, as soon as you have one self link, then, then you no longer have cycles. So cycles are really easy to fix, right? Um, and, uh, and, I, and, and, and you have these transient and these uh, absorbing states, and the taxation takes care of that, right? And so these are. These are like the, these are all transient states. The only absorbing states here are not out, right? Um, and then the other issue was uh, um, uh, what was the other what was the other thing you need to worry about? When it's very when it's exactly predictable. Uh, I guess when there's just two and they keep on bouncing back. Is this for ergodic or ergodic? Um, the other one was when it's not connected. Oh. Right, so the third one was not, and there could be these disconnected parts. But if you have a random uh, taxation, you jump to a random thing, so now everything has a link to it. So this problem is also done. So if those, those three things you need to watch out about, those are no longer part of what to do this taxation. And I thought, you know, you really wanted this to use, get as close to this P thing as possible. This was really describing the random surfer. But, um, but it's a, uh, and in this data, this 10% of the time you do something different, you're really destroying the structure. Um, but really, the structure was not that great to begin with. You shouldn't have trusted it that much. It's, it's easily, it, it can be fooled. And 10% of the time, it gets rid of a lot of these techniques which can still fool paper. And, and this part is not too hard to, to deal with either. This, if you combine this into a single matrix, right, as a, as a, as a single, probably transition matrix. It's now dense, right? This part is dense. But it's also somehow very easy to implement if you implement this as a function. So if you think of this as a function instead of as a matrix, then you can still implement it efficiently. 
And so there's still some, some issues we'll have to work out to really scale this up to large, large size. Okay, so, so this is basically how PageRank works, but there's still ways to fool PageRank. So, and these spammers had, had made, there was already an industry of these spamming web pages when Google came along, and they weren't just going to quit their jobs. So they came up with new ways to fool even PageRank. Um, so, um, so how do you think they did this? How could you fool this markup chain analysis? And to link you to a page that, you know, was not really that useful, that you created everything about that page. You somehow created, you know, you could control enough of the web in order to get the page rank of this page high. Keep in mind, there, there are going to be millions, or, or I don't know if there are, there, um, I guess there are billions of web pages out there now. So in order to get Q star to be large, it doesn't need, need to be that large if it's, if it's um, you know, if it's, if there are a billion web pages and, and yours is, is instead of, the, the, the probability mean there is instead of one over a billion is two over a billion, that's, that's already useful, right? That's already twice as much as the average. Um, if it's, you know, if there are a billion people on Facebook, each of those has a web page, right? So, so if, if you're twice as likely as someone, this already increases this rank. But you can increase it to maybe, um, maybe 100 times the average. So how would you do this? How would you create a, how would you change this graph, this web graph, so that your web page had a, had a large um, value of page rank, large Q star value? So let's first think of it without, without doing the taxation. How would you do it if there wasn't any taxation? So the, the thing we're talking about is sometimes called a spider trap. Think of it, if you have a crawler on a web, this is a spider, right? And so a, a spider trap is getting that crawler stuck or a random surfer stuck in your page. So, you, so you're saying you're going to create a, a um, strongly connected component with a bunch of web pages um, that you create. Right, so, so, um, so, so this would be like a clique, right? So, so you want to clique a bunch of web pages all linked to each other. Now, your goal is, let's say you want, to, you want to target one keyword at a time, or maybe a few number of keywords. You want to promote a few pages. Then each of these pages, if they're a clique, are going to approximately have the same value of page. How can you do better than that? Instead of promoting all of the pages, think of finding one page or a small number of pages and and uh, and getting this page a really high page. You need to just put that target pages. Right. Okay. So 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 we'll start. Uh, we're gonna have one page, um, which is gonna be the target page. And so the first idea was having a click here. So all of these link to each other, right? The, the other way instead is say all of these pages just link to this one target page, right? So now every time I did a, a random restart with taxation, I'm I'm going to wind up maybe in one of these pages, and then the next time I'm going to be at the target page. And so, so maybe I've got a few, of, like a handful of target pages, and, and these will um, link to each other. Right, so you have a few number of target pages, and each of these, so you have like a thousand 
web pages here, and each of these only link to the target page. So now, if you get to any of these web pages here, then they will link to this target page. And so, um, okay, so, so this works okay with, with, with the taxation, but how can you do it even better with these, with these, uh, these compromised web pages? How can you get links to, to your target page? Anyone who's surfed the internet must know the answer to this, right? How do you, have you ever seen like a weird link going someplace? And you're like, you've probably seen this in your email, right? Right, you've, if you get an email from a person you're not supposed to, this is spam, you shouldn't click on the link. That's another way of directing you to one of these pages, right? But there are other places where you see these links, right? On like in comment sections of blogs, right? Yeah. So th these links are linking to these pages, which then link to the target. Or maybe they link directly to the target. So then every blog entry, every blog comment that links here, if you got to that blog, you go, then one of the links on that blog page is, is going to this, it's going to this target. And this is a way of generating a lot of these web pages. And then you don't just get there with random taxation. If it's a popular blog, then, um, then it's gonna have a lot of traffic linking to it anyways. So the more popular a blog post is, the more likely it is to get spam. Because how they decide where to put the links is they, they go and they, they do like a random survey model and they go and find web pages that come up, and then they put their links there into their web page. Um, or they'll search for some term in Google, they find a blog entry where they can add leave a comment, then they'll leave a comment pointing to the target. So you can, so you build these structures, and this generates a lot of page rank on these target pages. Um, so they have some small probability of bouncing out, but 90% of the time they're staying within Inside of their, their inside of their targets. How do you fix that? Uh, besides from using uh, spam filters for blog, like WordPress has uh, WordPress has plugins that prevents comments that have links, so they put it for moderation. And only if you do the moderation, it will show up. But besides that, how can you prevent this? Well, so this this part of the graph. So the, there uh, there are two ways. Uh, this part of the graph. Has a very uh, has a very specific structure. You have a bunch of pages linking to these small number of pages. Now it could be these are just popular web pages.